Hello and welcome to On the Sunny Side. On the Sunny Side is a new digital TV format by the German edition of Forbes, and it airs every Thursday at 4 p.m. on the F15 Forbes YouTube channel. Now, my name is Sunny Grinneveld. I'm an entrepreneur and a Forbes under 30 list maker, and I we meet weekly with digital leaders on the sunny side, executives, entrepreneurs, researchers, people who are shaping the digital economy and who are helping us all to use technology in a way that advances the greater good in this world. Now today I have an amazing guest with me. Her name is Professor Margarita Hli. She's at the Federal Institute of Technology. She's a professor in robotics and she also heads the Vision for Robotics lab at ETH. Her research interests focus on robotic perception and she's been part of the world's first vision-based autonomous flight of a drone, which is absolutely amazing, a real pioneer with us. Welcome to the sunny side, Margarita. Thank you, Sun. Thank you for having me. So it's such a pleasure that you made it and for many people who watch the show regularly, they know I tend to start with something I call Sunny's Fast Five. And now Sunny's Fast Five are five questions that I um, use in a way to introduce my guests um, to get to know you a little bit as quickly as possible because Forbes 15 is 15 minutes uh, that we get to talk. But um, just maybe in, in one sentence, if you could answer the first five questions for me so we get to know you a little. Is that all right? Yes, yes, let's go ahead. All right, so uh, easy one to start with. Are you a morning or a night person? Mm, if I have to choose, I'll say morning person, but a um, bit of both actually. <laughs> and uh, when you, uh, when you, if you would get a time machine and you would uh, be asked, where would you want to travel and to which time period? And you could choose any future or past, where would you travel to and, and what time? Oh, geez, that's, that's such a hard one. Um, <clears throat> given COVID, I would say I would love to be back home. Uh, time travel back when I was, uh, I don't know, probably 10 years old, um, by the beach with the family. So this is uh, the place that I miss most now that uh, flights has been, have been quite restricted. So, yeah. Maybe tell us where's home for you? Home is Cyprus. Home is um, predominantly Cyprus. It's Greece and Cyprus, but uh, that's where my parents live. Hmm. And maybe sort of looking to, to research and, uh, you know, some of the some of the big questions and you, you know, I mentioned it earlier, you were part of that pioneering team, um, but there are so many questions that are, are still unsolved. And I think that's sort of the exciting thing as a researcher, you're always at this, at this edge of everything that's known and then so much ahead of you that is still unknown. What is a question, a research question um, in your field that's currently unsolved and, and really exciting to you? Oh, gosh, Sunny, you're full of good questions. Um, right, so what is a big question in the field? I guess um, something worth mentioning is, uh, so I work in robotics and vision, and that means that a lot of our work is demonstrated through videos. And so when we, we are submitting our work to a conference to be um, criticized and to, to be decided whether it's accepted or not, we submit a video together with um, the traditional paper uh, that in all disciplines is happening. So that means that um, we have a lot of flashy videos, we meaning uh, the community. So we are trying to make these great looking videos and probably also we are not helping the public understand really where we are in terms of the capabilities of robots and robotic perception by using flashy videos, but also the media is not helping at the same time because um, with all of these uh, AI inspired movies that um, robots are everywhere and, and they can do everything, uh, then a lot of uh, people think that, oh, you know, uh, robotic autonomy is solved, autonomous cars, um, it's solved, um, autonomous drones, um, you don't need to work on them. But actually the biggest problem that we have right now, so the biggest open question right now in my book is robustness. So we have methods that work well in, 
um, very specific uh, conditions in, let's say, controlled environments inside a factory, for example, or uh, navigating the same route back and forth without assuming any pedestrians uh, or, um, I don't know, birds flying over. So, but the big problem is robustness. And we humans, um, the way that we navigate in the world, we are much we're quite adaptable and we are very good in really adapting to the unpredictability that happens in the world around us. And robots and robotic perception, I would say, are a little bit far behind in that respect. So yes, in short, uh, it is robustness that I think it's one of the biggest questions right now in robotic perception. <clears throat> Interesting, what is, what is success to you then? Is it solving that question or is it something else? Oh, what is success? Um, <clears throat> for sure, um, it would be success if um, uh, tomorrow we had a system that is able to um, uh, be robust in all of the different uh, weather conditions, uh, lighting conditions, etc. But generally, if you're talking about success in general of a person, um, I would say success is happiness. So really, how can you... Um, use your skills and means that are available to you and your luck to create happiness. So I guess it's this balance between, um, of course, success in personal life, but also success in working life. You started and are really interested in this aspect of perception. And to some, uh, I guess the term is computer vision. Mm -hmm. For people who are really not uh, in this field, in one sentence or two, you know, what is computer vision really about? Because I think it's an important building block to our conversation uh, mm -hmm. going forward. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, computer vision itself is about automatically extracting some meaningful information from images and videos. Now, what is meaningful is a different story. But uh, to um, take a computer vision module and put it on board a robot to use its vision, so vision-based perception, to understand the world, and that's where it, it starts, um, let's say, melting into robotic perception. So computer vision is melting into robotic perception, but you can have robotic perception with other means. It doesn't necessarily have to do with vision. But um, a very, very big part of my work is vision-based robotic perception, yes. So computer vision has a big role in that. So simply put, you're giving ro robots and drones, you're giving them eyes and making sense of the world in a way through their eyes. Um, how, you know, how did you get to this intersection and why is it particularly drones? Because you've done a lot of work with, with aerial roboters. Um, why is it particularly drones that is interesting to you? Yeah, well, um, I guess the appeal with drones is that they are small and they can navigate through a small, um, tiny uh, area, so through windows and, and doors. They can really fly high up and gain the overview of a scene quite quickly. And uh, basically the fact also that they are small and agile, they, they move very quickly, that means that if we are able to equip a drone with visual perception, then mm -hmm. we can rather easily or straightforwardly think about how to do that on a phone or any other platform that can even have more uh, capabilities like um, a car, for example, that you would have more space to uh, pack it with more sensors and more computational power. So basically, if you can make a drone fly autonomously, it shouldn't be that hard to do that for a car or any bigger uh, land. Uh, yeah, yeah, roughly speaking, yes. Of course, every application has um, different specs and different difficulties, but overall, yes, this is the idea. And so when, you know, I think a lot of entrepreneurs and also the Forbes Under 30 community, um, which makes up a large part of my viewership, they're really excited about, you know, what can we do with this research? Like, when are we going to see some of these applications hit the business world? What is your take? What are some of the most exciting applications of the research that you're doing or, or your colleagues are doing? 
Yeah, I have to say that I was amazed myself. So in the sense that when I started to work in this field, I didn't really see the bigger picture, um, but the more I got into it and the more, um, let's say, uh, communicative I became um, through the position and just talking about my research, then more people were, would come to me to ask for whether we could help them in their application. So right now, we are engaged in uh, a lot of applications, for example, archaeology. So the archaeologists in Greece would like to digitize 250 archaeological sites and monitor how they degrade with time, how they degrade with weather. Um, we have an ongoing project with uh, architecture, <clears throat> with architects to build uh, robots and automation, bring robots and automation in construction and architecture. Um, we have a project with SBB that would like to um, uh, start building the perception of trains um, towards their autonomous navigation, toward, towards their safer and more efficient navigation. Uh, we have had projects into infrastructure inspection, for example, inspection of um, wind turbine farms in northern Sweden. Uh, because these are huge structures, uh, very expensive and very dangerous for humans to inspect themselves. So having drones navigate around a wind turbine, telling us whether there is a crack or something that needs to be changed, maintained. Um, so the possibility of that can really be uh, a game changer in, in such areas. What else? Well, um, of course, gaming, entertainment. Uh, so the same... Um, as I said before, we said before, the same similar technology that you could port on a drone, you could port on a phone. So you could have multiplayer games using their phones uh, to interact in the virtual world as well. So ooh, the plethora of applications is great. Search and rescue, inspections, I said um, some of them, but it's really fascinating to see um, how far one can go with uh, one or a few autonomous drones actually. Yeah, I, I love your passion. I mean, I'm, I'm getting more and more excited the more I talk to you, but <laughs> I guess <laughs> what, one thing that, you know, that we also read about a lot when it comes to drones is, is sort of the other side, uh, the darker side, if you so will, where, you know, people do share concerns around surveillance, around, uh, you know, using drones in warfare. I mean, I mean, there's this other side of it that's, um, I think also making many fearful of sort of, you know, how much do we want to advance this technology? And, and you're someone who's, you know, right at the forefront. So how do you, how do you look at that piece? And, and you know, are, are you concerned? Absolutely. Yes. I think everyone is concerned. Um, and I think we should be not in a frightening way, but more in a questioning way. So um, for sure, one can say that, um, different technologies can be used to monitor, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, people to avoid people while driving, but other, others can say that you wanna monitor people because you want to follow them and you want to uh, conduct surveillance on them. So it's super similar technology. The question is, how do you use it? And I like to usually um, <clears throat> bring up the example of a knife. Knife is a great invention. In the hands of a surgeon, it can save lives. In the hands of a criminal, it can take lives. So um, we are building tools. How these tools are used, I think it's a uh, subject to uh, debates and, and conversations that some, some of them have started and some of them are about to start and should start. So I think in, in, in this whole process, this big question, um, where are we going with these technologies, with all the automation, with all this um, robotic perception, advancing robotic perception? Um, yeah, I think there's, we need to, uh, as academics, we need to be very good at, or better at communicating what our tools are capable of doing. And every one of us needs to do their duty. So this is the duty of the academics. The duty of the public is to keep questioning. The duty of the journalists is to keep poking the, the ones in power and also the scientists to see how we can come up with, um, uh, let's say, policies to govern um, the use of these technologies, right? Um, and I think, you know, robotics is not 
the only field where such conversations need to come across. It's also um, from medicine, so uh, DNA testing, um, DNA cloning, um, uh, designer babies, all of these questions have been around for quite a while. And yeah, I don't think there's any other way to deal with this apart from debating uh, about them. I mean, I think in many ways that is what I'm trying to do with On the Sunny Side. So I'm, I'm so grateful that, you know, you, you're willing to have these conversations. Um, we're already, you know, we're already um, over time, but I would love to have some parting advice and thoughts for you. And, and I think one is for those who want to be um, informed citizens in this debate, who might not be researchers themselves, but really take an interest in the subject matter. Is there any resource uh, that you would recommend? Mm, wow, uh, these days, uh, I think the internet is packed with great resources and they keep changing all the time, I have to say. Um, but overall, I think there's some uh, quite good online courses from uh, Stanford and also on courses, so on Stanford, from Stanford online on autonomous uh, robots. Uh, we have also our very own at ETH, it's based on uh, the edX platform, is uh, the introduction to autonomous mobile robots. And there are also, um, there's particularly one great course on Coursera on uh, machine learning, introduction to machine learning. So yeah, I mean, I'm sure uh, your viewers can find many, many others, but this would be the top three that come to my head right now. I know that's awesome. I'll, I'll make sure to uh, get the links and to put them into the YouTube description. Um, and I guess like in terms of, of parting advice or thoughts, you know, what is, you know, this debate is still open, which is something, you know, you just said, but what are reasons for hope? Like what makes you hopeful that this debate will be had and will uh, ultimately lead to an outcome where we do use uh, technology for good? Uh, what makes me hopeful? I think it's, um, I trust in the good side of people. Uh, I'm uh, optimistic and that's not to say that I just I like to live in the cloud, but I see a lot of people already talking about the difficult questions, posing difficult questions, trying to address the difficult questions. So either in, in smaller clusters of, uh, let's say, academics between us, or also um, in, in bigger bubbles of audiences, bringing together people from different disciplines, which also I think is super important. Also, um, I have trust in the public opinion. I think as long as we are able to reach out to lots of different people, then we can trigger their thinking processes to uh, fire up questions back to us. Um, then I think uh, already this is already happening. And I mean, you can see it with all the big debates out there in the world. So people are not um, just sitting back and absorbing information as I think as we one would traditionally think that uh, you know that's uh, people are sitting in front of their TVs like couch potatoes and just sucking in all of the information, but I think um, judging from what has been happening in the world with COVID, with Black Lives Matter, with robotics, with medicine, there's so many things out there that um, there's so many strong opinions out there and people challenging these opinions. So this is what's making me hopeful. Sorry, this was a huge answer. But it's wonderful. <laughs> it's a complex topic and you know, um, and I think, you know, I think it merits that one, that one does uh, give it nuance because that's mm -hmm. what these subjects are. They are, mm -hmm. you know, many different nuances. So thank you so much for shedding some light on it. I really, really appreciate the conversation and, and, and your time. Super and, uh, pleasure. Thank you, Sunny. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Margarita. So uh, for uh, everyone else who's watching, if you would like to tune in at 5.30 again, there'll be yet another great conversation waiting for you with the editor-in-chief Klaus Fiala and his show, A Greatest Business Minds. I'll be back at 4 p.m. on Thursdays again, and I hope to see you soon on the sunny side.